Hi, I'm Jim Gehring from Brown Tool Auctions, and the topic today are dead-end patented plane. Plane designs that were patented and seemed like a really good idea at the time, but just never caught on and never went anywhere, which is something that uh, means that they're very rare, which means that collectors really love them. Back in the days of wooden planes, the method of holding and adjusting plane cutters was all pretty much the same. Um, the, you had a wooden a throat that went through the body of the plane, you stuck the cutter in there, you put a wooden wedge in it to hold it in place, and if you wanted to change the depth or change the adjustment, you had to take it out, you know, move it around a little bit, put the wedge back in. Pretty simple. When people started making planes out of metal, they came up with all kinds of different ways of holding and adjusting the cutters. And we've got a few examples here. This is what's called the challenge plane. It was patented in 1883 by a guy named Arthur Goldsboro from Washington, D.C. And it was uh, manufactured by a pretty well-known plane manufacturer, a guy named Ivor Johnson, and sold by another pretty well-known company, the New York hardware firm of Tower and Lion. Despite having those pretty well-known names associated with it, it was a flop, never went anywhere. You can see the, his idea was to uh, hold the cutter in place by having this, uh, this plate here screwed into it, kind of a split yoke here to hold the cutter, and you could adjust the depth of it by turning this knob. Um, it's uh, well liked by collectors because it's rare and because it's very decorative. It's got the name and the patent dates all cast into the side here, kind of an unusual streamlined appearance to it. So there's only a handful of these around. They're pretty, they're pretty rare. This is one that's called the Smith and Carpenter patent. The carpenter of the name was the Reverend Israel Carpenter, who was a nephew and apprentice of the Manuel Carpenter, who was one of the best known plane makers of the early uh, 19th century, he worked out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And after he patented this design, uh, Israel Carpenter went into the ministry, gave up plane making. He probably was better off being a preacher than a plane maker because this one never really went anywhere either. Uh, you can see this one has got this kind of rotate, this kind of sliding cap, which would later become pretty standard, with locked in place by a thumb screw. But the other thing that was uh, interesting about it was he had this very elaborate metal top to it, which is intended to, to keep the plane from flexing, to uh, make sure that in a very long plane it remained rigid. Now here we have a plane by one of the very best known developers of patented American planes, Leonard Bailey, the genius who went to work for the Stanley Company and developed the standard plane holding and adjustment mechanism that became the industry norm. And you can see this is, uh, it's got the, the lever cap, which he used, which uh, Stanley used on theirs, uh, with the, uh, the lockdown lever at the top. But what's different about this one, and this one was made before he went to work for Stanley, this is what's called a vertical post plane. You can see that it's got this um, knob here, that when you turn it, it moves the entire plane, mech the entire blade holding mechanism up and down, so it tilts back and forth to adjust the angle. Bailey messed around with these and a couple of other alternative designs before he went to work for Stanley, and these never went very far. So um, these, are, these are quite rare, particularly because they're made by Leonard Bailey, and therefore, unlike some of these others that are made by people who are pretty much nobodies, um, this is an example of his early work when he was first developing what would become his standard design for planes when he went to work for Stanley. This is kind of an oddball one. This was patented in 1875 by a guy named Asahel Dean of Philadelphia and subsequently manufactured by a partnership called Pike and Dean. Um, what's interesting about this one is he seemed to think it's got the, a fairly standard lever cap on it, but instead of it going in down like this, it comes in from the side. And it's got this ring to the side here that hooks in there and then a post sticks into this cheek here. And he thought this would make it just be so much faster and easier to remove than a standard leather cap. Um, so that was his big idea 
like a lot of these, it never went anywhere. Nobody was particularly impressed by it. So there are very few of these around. And finally, we have an extremely rare plane patented by a guy named John Glanz of Minneapolis. Unlike most of the rest of these that were patented in the uh, earlier part of the 1800s before the Stanley design became so standard, this one was actually patented in 1906. So Glanz apparently thought he could improve on the Stanley design. As you can see, what's interesting, first of all, it's made of solid brass or gunmetal, which is very unusual. But the interesting thing about this is the cutter is held by this kind of uh, thumb turn screw here, which you turn this lever. Let's see if you can see this. You turn this lever here, and then that gives a quick release to the plane. In addition, we've got this kind of lever adjustment up here to adjust the depth. So it's actually kind of a clever design. But by the time he came out with his design, the Stanley design was pretty much dominated the industry, and this never went anywhere either. When these first started turning up, people didn't know if they were patented, if they were some kind of uh, just one-off type design, but it's now known that these were patented by, by John Glanz, and there, there are maybe, oh, three or four of them known to exist, so these are also quite rare. So these are all uh, the kinds of dead ends that uh, collectors really love. They're all going to be for sale in our auction on April 1st in York, Pennsylvania. We hope to see you there.